Ray-Ban Meta Headliner Low Bridge Smart Glasses. Let's do a six month-ish review. Hey, what's going on? Hope you're doing all right. My name is Matt, this is Dwyer Creatives, and today we're going to be going over a almost six month review on these low bridge headliners made by Ray-Ban Meta. And these are smart glasses. Pros, cons, and who are they for? Starting off with my slightly negative cons, maybe, maybe not. You can get these with a low bridge in only two colors as of right now in this stone, but also they're shiny black, and they only come in headliner. Those are the only two combinations you can get these in. And then you can also get different lenses depending on what you want. Now for myself, I would have liked to see them offer more of the other ones in it, especially their new limited edition clear frame. I think that would have been a really interesting piece to have. I like see-through tech where you can see every little thing in it. I think that's really interesting. Now, another slight con that I've noticed is when you wear these in long-term, I notice like right here behind my ear where it kind of connects to the head, it gets a little fatigued over time because these are definitely heavier glasses. Now, I think the more I wear them, the less I notice it. Maybe you're building some dexterity up for that, but that is something to notice if you're just getting them. These definitely are a heavier glasses than your normal glasses. Now then the other item is this. There is only one official way to charge these glasses, and that's gonna be with this case here. And only in this color, unless you get the limited edition, but of course you can only get those if you get the regular Wayfarers, not anything low bridge. This is the only official way to charge your glasses. There have been a few people, or at least one person that came out with an alternative way. I would really like to see them offer something smaller that say I could plug into my power bank so that I could just go ahead and throw these into a soft case and carry with me because the overall size of this is pretty big. It takes up a lot of real estate in my bag. And when I'm trying to carry other things, it makes me pick and choose with my Apaca Ghostling Mini. I think it's like five liters. So I have to choose like, am I bringing my pocket and my Fuji or just my Fuji and my Ray-Bans or my Ray-Bans and my pocket? Some decisions I have to make. And as for myself, I would like to carry all three without having to upgrade to a bigger bag. I just wish they would offer a small little nose piece that you could connect right here that you could connect to your power bank make it a lot easier and I could throw that into a soft case. One other minor thing that I did notice was last month when we were at Caffeine and Octane, walking around trying to get POV shots of, or behind the scenes sort of shots. And about an hour in, it said that it was overheating. I was using this, not back to back to back, but taking a three minute clip, taking a three minute clip, spacing it out a little bit, taking a three minute clip. And it was in the upper 70s, maybe 80, maybe not, but I haven't had that issue before. And I'd run these at previous events, definitely when it was a lot hotter. So I'm not sure if that has to do with the software update or anything, but just something to note. For pros, I find grabbing the videos for this super easy. Just go ahead and click it, especially now that they last three minutes and then go do your next thing and hit it again. For a lot of social media platforms that use smaller clips in the vertical format, this is perfect for it. And the example that I'll use is TikTok. I've been working on there, testing a few things out, trying to see how things go. And one three minute clip, I can create a ton of clips from that because you can do it center, left, right. Because of the format you get, you have to stretch it out to make sure you get filled the entire thing. Or you could even just leave it in the format that it is. So then you have technically four ways to use the same footage. That way you're not running into the issue of using the same exact content in the same exact way over and over and risk getting a violation for low quality content. Now, the other thing I use this a lot for is listening to music and the battery life. I haven't noticed any increase, decrease in it. I'll go ahead and use it. Say if I'm grocery shopping, I'll listen to music or a podcast, throw it on there. And it's loud enough that I can hear it, but it won't disturb anyone else. Or say I'm at work and my ear pods, I forgot them or whatever. I'll go ahead and throw these on and they work well for, again, music and my podcast where I can hear it, but no one else can. So I use that actually a lot for that feature. So if you're looking for something like that, definitely check them out. After using these for this longer period, do I think that this overall was worth the money that you have to pay for? And I think that depends on two things. Do you need content that's POV? And then the other thing is, are you trying to capture kind of more candid moments just for yourself? And if you're trying to do either of those, I think it is a definitely yes. If you're wanting their AI features, 
or if you're just wanting to listen to music, maybe I try to find them secondhand. I see them fairly often go for about half the price, depending on what they are. Just something to think about because I notice with my use of the AI, it isn't quite there and pretty much anything that I would use it for, it can't do. So the AI, I don't really use. I actually have it turned off right now. I just use it for music and videos. But if you are using it for videos, I think that it is a very worthwhile investment to easily create more POV style content. Now, if you have any questions or comments about this, anything related to maybe specifically the low bridge models, because I've had quite a few people mention there aren't too many videos on it. Let me know down in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer all those. Also a sneak peek on some upcoming content. I've been working on trying to get the DJI Pocket 3 set up for POV style, and I do have some sort of rig set up. I'll leave a link to that video, but I'm working on something else that might work a little better. I gotta try it out tomorrow, and we'll see how that goes. It's gonna be this right here. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe below. If you're interested in Fujifilm X106 stuff, I have something right here for that. So again, subscribe if you're interested. If you enjoyed this video, give this video a like. The comments and likes help me gauge if I'm going in the right direction for these videos. And yeah, I'm just gonna wrap this up here. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.